Hey guys, Carrie Kiristar here, author of the 21st Century Superhuman Book Series. Today I want to talk about how different our world would have been if we had gotten something 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, what was being taught in the ancient Aramaic was what the true forgiveness process is. The true forgiveness process is us getting rid of our data that is causing something to exist in our world that we don't want to see. So when I see something negative around me that I'm struggling with, I need to acknowledge in a quantum world that it's my own data. So how do I get rid of that? That's a really good question. Uh, my friend, Dr. Michael Rice, is moderator of the study of a document called the Kaboras Manuscript. And that completely changed his life. His website is called whyagain.org. And from that website, he has produced for like 10 years, five days a week, radio shows talking about how we truly forgive. And he has a compadre, a friend who is great, Dr. Tim, who also does some of the sessions. So I was having something I was wrestling with the other day, and I used the ancient Aramaic worksheets, which are in my 21st century superhuman book, Mind, and that completely goes into how we change this data in ourselves. Um, and those can be found at, they can be found on Amazon, but you get better deals at my website, which is 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. So I actually was wrestling with being frustrated because some young people that were working with me in the Philippines were showing up. And I knew that there were extenuating circumstances and they're in a poor country and all this, but I knew that I had rage going on because of this. I had irritation, I had frustration. And I had done a bunch of the Aramaic worksheets that helped me clear my data, but I just wasn't quite getting there. So I called into the radio show, which you can do. Like if you're wrestling with something, you can call into the radio show, and um, in this video coming up, it'll show you where and how to do that. But you can listen in on me getting taught through this process by Dr. Tim. And then um, another lady comes on after me, and she brings up, oh, I feel so bad when I see animals suffering in these ads, and I'm trying to figure out how to deal with that from a forgiveness standpoint. So her conversation comes right after mine, and then Dr. Michael Rice is on after that, and he's discussing various things. So anyway, um, if you'd like to learn, listen in. Um, the actual session with Dr. Tim is about 20 minutes, goes pretty quick, and you can hear how I work through some of my own data to get to the clearing and the forgiveness box. Okay, see you guys in the recording. Ciao. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. I'm Jeannie Rice, your co-host. We also have co-hosts Dr. Tim Hayes and Michelle Pache. We will share with you the wisdom of the first century Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. We offer tools and support five days a week. We will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself. To live in pure love, in Aramaic, Brachna. Michael is the author of the book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information about the forgiveness process, please visit www.whyagain.org. And now, welcome to the show, Mind Shifters Radio. Hello and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio. I'm Tim Hayes. I'm your host for the first hour. And today is Thursday, December 14th, 2023. As always, we're grateful to everyone who's joining us here today, whether you're listening live or through the archives, as we spend another couple of hours teaching and supporting people in using some of the most powerful, effective, efficient, and accessible tools I've ever encountered these tools are available absolutely free through the tireless efforts of Dr. Michael and Janie Rice on the website at whyagain.org. 
If you go to that website and you click on the two words that say start here in the upper left-hand corner, it will take you to a page where you can download and read Chapter 24 of Dr. Michael Rice's book. His book is titled, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? And that chapter of the book contains a narrative description and explanation of the primary tool in this work. That tool is called the Reality Management Worksheet, sometimes called the Reality Management Wake-Up Sheet. And it's a tool I've been using to great effect for over 19 years now to improve the quality of my life and most of my relationships and to turn any negative emotional experience I have into part of the infallible guidance system that each and every one of us has been given. You can also download the actual worksheet process itself. It's a simple PDF file. Click the link, download it, print it off, copy it as often as you'd like, and use it over and over again absolutely free. You can also go to your app store and type in the three words, Heartland Aramaic Forgiveness. And if you do that before you're done typing the word forgiveness, you'll see the glowing heart icon. If you choose to tap on that, it will let you download a completely free and private app that contains the Reality Management Worksheet. It contains an abbreviated version of that worksheet process. And it contains a copy of the Dragon Klingon game, which is a wonderful way to introduce these tools to even younger audiences. Giving us a call at 563-999-3581 and press 1 on your phone. You're in the air. Who do we have and how can we support you? This is Carrie Ellis. How are you today? I'm doing well. So last night I was doing some worksheets, and I thought it would be really nice to talk it through with one of you guys because oh, the worksheets work so well. I mean, you know, once you know how to use them and you do use them, and they're in my 21st Century Superhuman books also with credit to Dr. Michael Rice. Um, but they are just such a wonderful tool and they do just relieve the pressure of the emotional baggage that we carry (laughs) and it does bring it back to self but I thought I would just run it by you and see what input you could give me this can you hear me better I can hear you now yes I, I can hear you both ways this has a little different quality to it but go ahead Okay, so uh, the issue that I was dealing with, I have some young people in the Philippines doing some outsourcing work for me, and a couple of them are really good when they do their tasks, but they, a lot of times they don't show up when they say they will, or they take a long time for it to get done. And I'm sure part of it is being in a very poor culture where everything is not as simple as we have it here. But it's brought up a huge amount of frustration for me. So that's what I did my worksheets on. And um, I don't know. I guess how it, what, can you give me any um, directional insights? It's been chronic for several months. And so finally yesterday I was thinking, oh, I just need to do some worksheets on this. So I did, and I felt a lot of clearing, a lot of, you know, opening up to other levels, and yet I still feel some layers of frustration in there. Any okay, thoughts? and so what's the thought you're using to generate frustration? Mm. Boy, let me grab my notebook that I wrote in last night. Um, I think it's, I wish they would show up when they say they would. That's a good one. (laughs) You know, and when it asks, can I remember when I've done this, I really, I mean, I can't. Maybe, I don't know, you know, when I was a kid or something, but I don't really have any memories of that. So did you say you cannot? I don't really remember a time when I did that. Um, Didn't show up when I said I would. Okay. Uh, So that's probably selective memory at one level, because we've all done everything that we think we're upset with somebody else for. Because if if that weren't the case, we wouldn't have any upset for it. And we're and not only have we done it, but we're still judging ourselves negatively for it, or we wouldn't have upset uh-huh. when our mind shows us a picture of somebody else doing it. 
mm-hmm. that's the that, that's one of the the bottom line observations that says I'll never be upset about anything anybody else ever says or does or doesn't do that I think they should unless I'm still judging myself negatively for doing the same or similar thing. Right. And it may be that I was so, so good or bad, however you want to say it, at doing that, that decades ago in my life I turned over a new leaf and now I'm one of the people who's the best in the world at avoiding that negative behavior. And Mm -hmm. still... If that negative behavior shows up in my mind attached to my image of somebody else and there's any upset in me, it means I'm still judging myself negatively for doing the same or similar thing. And so one of the ways to kind of uh, extra charge or, or you know, put the, the, the worksheet on steroids is to ask myself, okay, let me describe... The, the behavior or trait that I that my mind is telling me this person is exhibiting, and I start going through some descriptors. Well, they're being irresponsible. Well, they're being, you know, lazy. Well, they're being, um, you know, wishy-washy. Well, they're just being disrespectful. <laughs> and I guess I get that emotional charge on one of those words, right? I go, oh, that's the uh-huh. one. <laughs> so, so now I just want to take, the, take a breath or two and ask myself, when in the recent or distant past was I disrespectful, in this case, the example we're using, that I'm still judging myself negatively for? And if I sit with that question and let it bubble up, something will come up. It may not be the right, or like the key issue right away, but I'll have some memories of things. If I have an emotional charge around somebody being lazy or disrespectful or impatient or whatever, it's going to be because I'm still judging myself negatively for, for doing that or something very similar, even if it was in the distant past. And so now when that memory comes, now I can either start doing EFT tapping or reality management worksheets or what Michael calls the um, mind shifter tool, that targeted journaling, around my negativity, my negative judgment of self for that pattern. And when I finally uncover, let's say I remember something from when I was X number of years old, the fill in the blank 20 15 7 doesn't really matter but when i go back and i let myself remember what was going on in my life at that time how old i was what i really understood about life issues and relationships and money etc i will see oh my gosh i was only 15 right? and what did i not how much did i not understand about the world when i was 15 basically everything, right? And then I, when I dismantle the negative judgments against myself for doing that at whatever previous age, even if it was 25 or 30, when I come back to the present moment and breathe and soften and look at this other person that my mind was telling me minutes before, I'm upset because they did this and this, all I'm going to feel for that person is the same compassion I have for my younger self. I'm going to realize, oh, they must be feeling some form of overwhelm, frustration, you know, negative self-thoughts, etc., just like I was when I did this way back when. So it's a pretty powerful way to uh, kind of supercharge your worksheets because, as we know in this work, it's all an inside job. Yes. It's all smoke and mirrors when my mind wants to tell me I'm upset because of anything outside of me. Yes, that's right. You know, while you were talking, you really acted. <laughs> a memory was activated, and I was like seven or eight years old, and my dad yelling at me for not showing up however he expected me to show up. And I'm getting this wave of stuff. And um, 
Yeah, this totally makes sense. Thank you so much for talking it through. Um, it's really helping me grasp some other tangents here. Well, you know, it, it is such a rock-solid thing. I don't know if you've been listening to the show lately, but we're reading through The Way of Mastery again. We did it oh back God. in... Oh, God, I, I haven't in, been. In, no, I haven't we, been listening. We, we did it back in 2022, and we read mm-hmm. through the whole thing with commentary. And so for most of this last year, we read some other books and, um, you know, the A Walk in the Physical... Um, by Christian Sundberg and um, Diedrich Wolzak's book, Choose Again. and So we've done some other things, but now we're back, you know, almost two years later, starting to reread The Way of Mastery. And in The Way of Mastery, this issue, this dynamic, this thing that made its way into the, the ten bottom line observations that I give to patients is right there in The Way of Mastery as well. You know, it says reactivity of any kind indicates the need for you to go inside yourself and dismantle judgments against yourself. Mm -hmm. And whatever you haven't forgiven or dismantled as a negative judgment against yourself, you will have reactivity for when your mind shows you a picture of somebody else doing it. It's exactly the same dynamic. So I had mentioned um, doing um, EFT tapping and right. or the targeted journaling that Michael calls a mind shifter. Or just I can do like if you have this memory that's come up uh, of your father, you know, having this negative reaction and blaming you for not showing up the way he wanted you to, you can do the reality management worksheet on that as though you were yourself right. at that age. And then even more to dig a little deeper, you can do one as your father. Yes. So how old do you imagine you were in this memory? Probably seven or eight. So then you can do it as a father who's got however many kids and whatever his life circumstance was at that time. Right. Who's seven or eight-year-old, who he sees as intelligent right, and competent at certain levels, doesn't right. do what he thinks they should do and it adds this stressor in his life at this way. Or, so you can do the worksheet as though you were him to good effect. Very good. Yes. Very good. So if I were to do a mind shifter, could you help me consider what how I would start that? Okay, so what? just to give this the most effectiveness, what's the word you would use to describe what you or what your father would use to describe what you did, the trait or behavior that you did when you were seven that he was so upset about? Well, it's interesting because it is kind, it's kind of a blurry memory, but... Um, you know, when I first did the worksheets, I had rage, and he had a lot of rage when I was a kid. And then when I second, you know, later worksheets, it was frustration. And he had a lot of both rage and frustration that he expressed to us. And um, Okay, but you're, you're off the so target right now. So I was the right recipient. Now. So I know, you're right, trying but, to get but, what but, was my but, something well, in the midst of that. And well, I'm well, kind of what, trying to dig my way say? out of it. Well, what would he say you did? I just want to say I don't know. Um, right, right. Maybe but, that I didn't do a good job on something. That would probably be it. Well, when you first said this, you had the phrase that you didn't show up the way he wanted you to. Yes, and that's true. That's it. Um, I, I'd say that's probably it. Okay, so... Would you say, yes or no, it's fine, that he was disappointed? Yes. In you or your performance? It appeared that way. It appeared that way. But all we're asking for is, as you hear the word disappointed, does that make really good sense that he would be that upset 
based on what you know of him from your past and how he used to get upset with things? Or is there a different word that he might have felt about you? I would say disappointed was a good word for how he felt okay. about Okay, so then the, then the mind shifter... Happened. So then the mind shifter would be, it's safe and healing for me, and I love it when people create a picture of me as being disappointing. <laughs> or when good. people choose to believe I have disappointed them. Mm-hmm. And then what would I be writing then? Um well, what's your first thought when I say to you, you know what, Carrie, it's really safe and healing for you whenever anybody thinks you've disappointed them. <laughs> Probably no, it's not. You know? That's what you start writing. It's safe and healing for you when people rage out at you because they think you've disappointed them. Yeah. Whatever your thought is in response to that is what you start writing. No, okay. it's not. And then you might just start writing, if it comes to you to write this, whatever kind of memory you have about being seven or eight when your dad was raging out at you, that little memory that got sparked from when I was talking earlier. Right. And just start writing as many details of that as you can and how that felt for you as that seven or eight-year-old. Okay. And then if you go blank, then you just, you know, rewrite that the mind shifter again it's safe and healing for me and you might even say and i love it when people rage out at me because they think i've disappointed them okay yeah and you know what as you as you're saying this i get this is going to sound really stupid because i know what forgiveness is but i just feel unforgiving towards these people that are supposed to be showing up to me for working and don't show up um, and I know that that's not accurate thinking, but it's what pops up. Well, so here's the issue with this, right? At one level, you've got some practical issues to address, right? You you'll right. have some yeah. you'll have some machinery going in your life where this piece has to happen, and then that piece has right. to happen in order for this this thing to come to fruition and maybe you've made commitments to other people that if, right. if if these people at the other end don't do what they do then you can't live up to so at one level there is this practicality that needs right. to be addressed at uh-huh. another level i can't really address that very effectively or efficiently if i have a negative emotion active in my mind correct so why am I using somebody in another country that doesn't have the same values or ethics or ease of lifestyle that would allow them to be as punctual as I want? Well, because it's, you know, it's cheaper for me and um, I'm on a limited right. budget, whatever this thing is. So I consider all of these things and then now I'm starting to think, well, maybe I am harboring some uh, resentment at myself that I don't have more money to do this a different right. way. And then uh-huh. I can do the worksheets on that resentment at me for not having the wherewithal to do it in a different way. And it doesn't, right. none, of, none of this is about any of that. This is just clearing the way of my negative emotions. So then when I open my eyes and look at the current situation, I'll have a much better, clearer image of all the factors, all the moving pieces, and I'll be able to make a better decision about how to get these things done in a way that yeah. satisfies all the needs. Uh huh. But I can't come up with those kinds of powerfully effective, creative solutions when there's anger or resentment or hurt or bitterness or grief or shame or any of those negative emotions coloring my perception right very good I'm taking notes (laughs) that's really good 
I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you talking me through it. <laughs> Sometimes we get stuck in our own stuff, you know, even if we are, even if we do know the tools. It's like, oh my God, how do we Absolutely. get out of this one? Absolutely. That's, that's the purpose of a show like this or the support groups or, you know, uh, the, uh, the access that Michael and Jeannie offer on an ongoing basis through the the app that where people can, you know, it's the reason for all of that is because it's so needed. Yes. Cool. So well, I really how are you feeling it. about that? Are you Are you complete with that for now? Yeah, I think so. I think I have a lot of some work to do. You know, I need to sit here and do um, some mind shifters and some worksheets and just do some more deeper levels of clearing. But it really helped. You know, I, I just felt stuck. I just didn't really know where to go next. So this really helped me get to where I can feel like I can keep moving through it. Thank you. You're most welcome and deserving. And if you have any interest in following along with the way of mastery or the most, like lessons three and four are the ones that we're on now that have, have that piece right in them in lesson three where it says reactivity of any kind indicates a need to go into myself and dismantle <laughs> my judgments and my perceptions about myself. And that's in the third lesson. Very good. So if, if you go to um, the, the MindShiftersAcademy.org website, and, you know, there at the top of the menu are these, you know, the pages for the files that I've been doing just this year, reading it with commentary. Okay. okay. And they're labeled, Great. you know, the, the one page has lessons one, two, and three on it, and you can scroll right, right. down to the bottom and get to the lesson three and start listening to the the reading of lesson three with commentary and you'll start hearing some of that stuff. All right. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. I just really, really, really appreciate it more than I can say. Well, it's great to hear your voice again and you're welcome and deserving and feel free to uh, keep us posted. I <laughs> will. Okay. Thank you so All right. much. So we've got about 28 minutes left. Five six three nine 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 three five eight one. If you have a comment or a question, like Susan Bingham does. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Tim. That was really good. I've taken to go for long walks in the morning. It's been going on for years. And one thing I do is a lot of I talk to myself, process things. And I had a fight with you this morning on my walk. <laughs> I talked. I was myself and you both. I'm not going to need the radio show anymore. I actually, I loved what you did with with Terry, Carrie, whichever it was. I couldn't hear. But it's K. And it was, Carrie. Oh, hey, okay. So I uh, this morning when I got up, I I read the New York Times online, and I usually don't look at the news first thing in the morning. Uh, because it's often a trigger, and sure enough, there was a trigger. And some of these pictures are shown a lot on different feeds, like in Facebook, of animals who are starving and freezing, and they are pets that have been left behind of necessity out in Ukraine or something, groups asking for money for food for these emaciated beasts. And so I go into a terrible state. And I think I know some of the origins of that. My question is, here we are living separately and we do have feelings for creatures and other people. Let's hope we do. Do we ever get to the point where we can feel incredible sorrow and, and um, concern for a, a fellow human or a beast and and yet you don't call it a trigger, and you're not unhealthy. It's a healthy thing. And uh, anyway, if you want to, I asked you that question in my mind this morning, and it, I got to, I got I, an answer. What, what, Maybe what was I, I should tell you what so, you said. What was I saying? That was so argumentative. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you know how Michael likes to watch movies that trigger things because he wants to clean everything out, which is so optimistic of him. So I'm thinking, all right, there is a line, and it's probably different from everyone, for everyone, but there is a state you can be in where you see a great need and you feel a great amount of love and compassion for a person who's suffering or a creature who's suffering. And yet, you're okay. You're okay, you're breathing, and you're okay, you're... I wouldn't even say detached because already that means there's some, maybe it is detached, but in any way you said, well, think of it as what level or upset. If you're at a level of upset that's affecting your health, for instance, it's gotten into your cells, it's not, you could make yourself sick. If you can get it to the point where you can be have equanimity, balance. You still have the concern. You may have a lot of feelings about something, but you are an effective action taker if that's what is required. Or you can put it aside without having given, without having um, made it so you haven't given it's due. Boy, there's something in there that isn't digested. I can tell. I think it's a belief that I have to go through something in order to get to that point. Otherwise, I haven't been a kindly human being. I'm a bad person if I don't do that. Okay. Okay. There, there it is. There's yeah. the judgment, right? Yeah. And the judgment is always in error. Okay. You know, your original question, is it ever possible that we just see something and have a tremendous emotional response and it's okay? And um, the, the answer is that's exactly what we're talking about, that whatever happens in the flow of life, we're okay with because that's life. You know, Byron Katie says, everything that's already happened was just perfect. How do I know that? Because it happened. Ooh, right? This is yeah. the woman who said, who said, look, I only suffer not when I have negative thoughts, but I only suffer when I believe my negative thoughts. I judge them as right or wrong, and I pour that mind energy into it. That's what creates my suffering. So Michael Singer talks about this um, ability to just step back and observe the flow of life, like we would watch a symphony or a play or a football game in which we didn't have any vested interest in who wins or loses. We're just enjoying the pageantry. And he says that's just like, um, Krishnamurti, one of his quotes is, the highest level of wisdom is observation without judgment. Observation with allowance and surrender. So I watch the flow of life. And this doesn't mm. mean I sit back and do nothing because if it's being presented to me, I love this thing where David E. Martin was, he wrote this book, Lizards eat butterflies, oh, yeah. and uh, and and in it, and he tells a story of you know, being somewhere in one of these countries where um, he's driving in a foreign country, and he's in this. He's been picked up from the airport in a limousine, and as they're driving, they're driving past this unspeakable poverty, and they're in a limousine. Mm. They're in a fancy ultra limousine and they're going to this fancy yeah. place and he mm. says to the guy he's there with i can't believe this this can't be right this has to be wrong look at this and the man mm -hmm. says to him what if it's all perfect and part of the perfection is you're seeing what these people have need for 
and you're you're recognizing it and you're one of the people who has some of the resources to help turn it around so it's not that we're recommending that you just sit in a cave and isolate from everything that's less than what you would judge as perfect we're talking about being right here in the flow of life and maintaining your peace and letting the flow of life act on you and have your flow of response be directly in accordance with what the needs of the moment are and what your resources are for addressing them. So yes, I might feel a tremendous flow of energy through my heart space that, you know, mm. he he talks about things like the um, going to the, uh, the best Shakespeare performance ever of one of those traumas, dramas, you know, they, whether it's Romeo and Juliet or something else, and you're sitting in that theater and you're so moved, you're crying. It's eliciting mm-hmm. all of these intense emotions from you. And you start thinking before the, the play is even over, oh, my gosh, this is the best I've ever seen. I've got to tell my friends about this. I've got to come back here with some family members. This is amazing. Well, you you can imagine that happening, right? Because this tremendous yeah. performance playing out on stage in front of you, and it's eliciting through you in your heart space all of these intense emotions. And he says, mm. but, but when it's in your day-to-day life and the way you interpret the life events and the samskaras that you've loaded in your energy system, you're not so happy about it. You don't mm. want to invite people to share it with you. Mm. Why? It's just this flow of energy. It's just life. Unless we judge it and we say it's wrong or it's bad or it shouldn't be happening. And that's how we create what we would experience as something painful that we don't want to have happen. Whereas in the other experience, not only even though it's really intense emotions and we're crying, we're experiencing it as wonderful and we want to bring friends to share it with them. So it isn't the energy, it isn't the thing that's happening, it's what I interpret it as. It's the judgment I put on it. It's it's the essence of, you know, what we're talking about here in Lesson 4 and Lesson 3, that uh, you know i'm i'm creating my experience of whatever flows past me by how i choose to interpret and respond to it that's another way to say it so i'm interested i don't know exactly what i was saying in your talk in your mind that was so argumentative <laughs> yes that's that's how i would respond now no you weren't being argumentative you were teaching you were actually helping me figure out stuff and it was good and I got to a better place but I keep bumping up against I'll put it another way there was another thing that happened in the support group that Tim and I run on Wednesdays one of the members was telling about how her cat used to collect birds catch birds and kill them and she would just race downstairs and catch the cat and get the bird, and if the bird was salvageable, she would nurse the bird or do whatever. And this time she decided to be detached, and she heard the the panicked cry of a bird. But she sat still and breathed and thought, this is life, I'm just going to let this happen, and I don't need to be concerned, this is just nature, and I can be detached. And then the the other part of the story, which isn't applicable here really, it's so strange, but she said she went downstairs and there never had been a bird. As far as she could see, the cat had been asleep in the same spot and she had just imagined the whole thing and given herself this mental exercise. Okay, I'm just going to back off of that part of it, the fact that it never happened and all that. I don't know what to make of that. But 
my cat used to catch birds too. And we used to have parakeets and they were tame and they were funny and they had huge personalities. Uh, and so I have a really powerful feeling for birds. And if I heard that cry, I would be like lightning. I'd be after the cat, catch the, catch the cat, force its mouth open, bird pops out. Most of the time the birds were okay because it was early enough. And I would take the bird and put it in a little cage and wait till it got unstunned and then I'd let it out or we'd keep it a while or whatever. Um, but my response had nothing to do even with feeling. It was just doing what I thought was necessary. And I still think it's necessary. I don't think I can ever get away from the idea that I need to be on the side of releasing a bird. If my cat has a bird, where am I going with this? I guess the... the the hook is, is there a hook? Am I in anguish over the bird? Is there a huge upset? No, I've gone ahead without even thinking, actually. So maybe this isn't part of the argument after all. Well, here's also, the idea. Here's the okay. idea that I can... Uh, you're judging whether or not this is right or wrong. Instead of not necessarily, yes, I'm just you are. judging that's, that the bird would probably that's like whole, to live. That's right. That, that's the whole thing about it. Is here's should I do this or should I do that? Was I okay doing this or is this something that somebody else would judge if I should do a worksheet on it? That's what you're you're doing here, and it's okay. The point of this work at this deeper level is it's all okay, mm. and you make it not yeah, okay. okay when you judge it one way or another. Mm. Oh, that's so, good. So, so, you know, look at it this way. Here's David E. Martin driving around in a limo in this foreign country. Yeah. And he sees all this poverty, and he's moved so deeply. He says, somebody's got to do something. This is wrong. Something's wrong with creation that this could happen. And his friend, at a different level of observation, and perhaps some would say wisdom, says, well, look, what if? It's all perfect just the way it is, and part of that perfection mm -hmm. is that you're here to see it. Mm -hmm. And you have the resources to do something about it. Same thing here. Yeah. What if it's mm -hmm. all perfect? It's fine if yeah. you're not there and a cat catches a bird. That's part of nature. And it's fine that if you're there and you hear the bird and you're able to rescue the bird and set the bird free, that's fine too. It's the flow of nature. What if there's no reason to judge, should I do this or should I do that? I'm just mm. letting the truth of life act on me in the moment and having my actions that I'm congruent with from that calm, centered, compassionate space flow out into the flow of life. Mm. I haven't even thought of myself as part of nature in all this. If I think of myself as part of cackling. <laughs> so, so how do you think of yourself if not as part of life? I don't know. Question, though, isn't it? How are you thinking of yourself if not as part of nature, as part of life? She dropped off, and now she's back. I'm back. Yeah, these buttons. <laughs> Carrie had a button, and anyway. So, so I'm just saying it's a good question. It's a good thing to, to consider. If you have not even thought of yourself as part of life, as part of nature, then do some observation about that. Mm. And see how that is has been weaving itself, whatever it is you have been thinking about yourself, has been weaving itself into your actions and reactions. Well, I can't answer that directly right yet, but I'm going back to what you said about Michael Singer and how he talks about surrender. It's about releasing an overblown sense of responsibility and just taking whatever 
responsibility is natural right then or somehow not getting all tense about it. Anyway, I'll have to think about that. Well, that goes right in line with what Way of Mastery asks us to do in the fifth lesson as keys to the kingdom. It says, allow, surrender, you know, be in the flow. Mm Mm-hmm. And by the by the third lesson it's saying the whole process of forgiveness is dismantling of judgments at every level of yourself and of others. Mm-hmm. And so when you when when you get into the when you get into the process of judging at any level and mm-hmm. then you have some reactivity the way of mastery says any level of reactivity indicates a need for forgiveness, for dismantling your judgments yeah. and your perceptions. Mm-hmm. Well, it's an ongoing thing, isn't it? You yep. said at one point, moment to moment, and it is like that. And but I realize we're down to our last minute, so I will yeah. mute you if you can listen to the second hour, and I will... Thank you for your questions and comments, as always. I'll remind us all that we come from love. We're made of the stuff we call love. We actually are love, and everything else is false. And I'll welcome Jeannie Rice. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Excellent conversation. I appreciate you. Welcome and deserving. Have a wonderful show. Thank you. So welcome, everybody, to the second hour of Mindshifters Radio. And today is Thursday, December 14th, 2023. And our call-in number is 563-999-3581. And press 1, and that puts you into queue to talk to us. And we would love to hear your comments and questions because that makes this your show. Hello, Michael. Thank you, dear heart. And welcome, everybody. Delighted that you're here and looking forward to uh, seeing what unfolds today. We're working on putting our ever-expanding Mind Shifter list together for those who are in the yearly uh, Mind Shifter System Point Breathing Club. And that will happen this Saturday and Sunday if you're inclined to join us. Beyond that, uh, we had announced that we were going to uh, step into working with the Kavoris Manuscript through the Enlightenment book that we publish, and we made the announcement yesterday, and we're going to make one slight adjustment in the offer that we made where we're going to uh, be shipping the book for free, and when we checked out, PayPal takes a chunk on top of you know, whatever, when people uh, purchase something. So what we're going to do is the book's 25. We're going to pay the shipping, and we're going to ask you to pay a dollar worth of shipping or a dollar worth of something, and that takes care of what uh, what PayPal takes care of. So, so if you decide you want to do that, uh, you could order the book, and uh, if you just uh, put in, your, in the donation uh, notes the uh, word enlightenment, so you, we'll know that we, you want us to send you the book, and uh, and then your name and address, so we'll know who and where to send it. So I'm really looking forward to that. I've been spending a little more time with the Enlightenment book. I haven't really opened it in a while. So looking forward to uh, seeing what unfolds as we step into that study, what kind of new and exciting things come to view. Levels and levels and levels of, un- of perception to be to be worked with. Beyond that, if you have a thought or a question for us, our call-in number is 563-999-3581. And if you dial that number, you'll be listening to the show directly. And if you have a question, all you do is push 1 and... That was the hand of the control panel. Excuse me if I'm distracted. I'm just 
sending someone a note who said they'd wanted to uh, to join us for the show, but I wasn't sure whether or not they had number the number, so I was just texting that to them so they know how to get into the show. So five six three nine 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 three five eight one push one, and we're having a conversation. So what's most exciting on your mind? As I was listening, I listened to the last few minutes of the conversation, Susan, with yourself and Dr. Tim. Good conversation. And what was clicking, we were we were working on one of the sections of the uh, the ever-expanding mind shifters list is living without perception. And what clicked in my brain is the conversation went on about, you know, judge not lest you be judged, uh, was... And, and of course, a lot of people will try to figure out what it, well, what does judgment mean? Well, how do I know if I'm even judging? Well, actually, there's a simpler, there's a shortcut to that one. Perceive not. Let, let yourself let let yourself <clears throat> be out of your mind and live in the mind of love in you that you were designed for. The ancient teachings called that the mind of Christ that there is a mind of love that is available to you. And when you live in that mind, you'll be living in and have direct input and feedback from the actual world, from actuality. As long as you're living in perception, you're living in carbon-based memory, the replicate mind, and everything that you'll see will be some sort of, or pardon me, everything that you think you'll see, because the pictures that you see the, the, should, let me do this differently. The visual images that you get are images painted on the inside of your eyeballs by your mind converted content of carbon based memory into pictures. You're not looking at what's going on out there. You're not, you've never seen anything with your eyes. You never will see anything with your eyes. Eyes can't see. The brain sees. Eyes don't. Eyes are antennas, frequency devices that capture light and the information that's carried by that light is transferred to the brain. The brain does all the seeing. The brain generates the world you see, perception. And so it just occurred to me as I was listening to that conversation, thank you, Dr. Tim and Susan, for that. It occurred to me that we can end the the struggle, conversation, discussion, concern about judgment by just recognizing that perception is not where you want to live. And when you you habitually collapse that world of perception, then you get to move to a place of corrected perception because the unconscious dynamics that play out from the replicate mind are healed through that process of forgiveness. Then you have a space where the actual energies of the actual world become available to you. I was working with someone this morning, and the bottom line was the statement that's where the creator says, be still and know. Let perception go. Perception is not stillness. Perception is energy moving in you. And you can't ever know from perception. You just can't do it. You can get yourself some instructions for how to get rid of the thing itself, but there's no knowledge there. Lots of information, but all the information that's there is from the past. It replicates the past, and that becomes the thing that cuts us off from the ability to actually receive the information from actuality that will always guide us to correct action. So appreciate that conversation. Much appreciation. And Ms. Jeannie, do we have anything happening in the phone queue, anything in the chat room, any questions from the app, anything exciting for you to introduce to our conversation? No, don't have anything else, and there's no hands up. Um, Terry's not with us yet. Nobody's in the chat room saying anything. Oh, a hand just went up, but I believe that it is Joanna. 
Welcome. Oh. I'm not sure her hand went up and then it went down. Joanna, are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Well, Hi. hey there, young lady. We haven't heard your voice in a long time. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to share with you that I had um, sent Peter in Sweden a text that I needed his help because I haven't. I, I I don't do anything I say I'm going to do. Now, that's an overstatement, but that's how it feels. And um, Will was one of the traits that I was working on in her right. class. So it's not surprising that that would be an issue that comes up for me of not doing what I say I'm going to do. That's, that's the will faculty. Yes. Um, so anyway, he called me this morning and said, well, you said you were going to do two worksheets, and you said you didn't do it, but the good news is I did cross it off for that day as a goal. Um, so I did learn something, Michael. Um what was anyway, that? For my goals. So right, get rid of the stress. With, right. So anyway, um, the conversation with Peter was delightful, as you can imagine. And I committed to doing one worksheet as soon as we hung up. And he said, he said, and not after you organize the spices. And, um, <laughs> so, Wise um, guy. Yeah, I did it, and it was such a wonderful reminder of the many things I learned in those courses. And, um, and then you know, synchronicity being what it is now. And it's so easy to forget that what I think I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. Um, and, you know, the reminder that the brain can only process so much data and it's a speck of what I'm exposed to. So it's a best guess of what's really happening out there. And, That's it, um, exactly. So it was, yeah, it was just really good to hear you uh, restate that, and it felt wonderful. Just doing just that one worksheet felt really good and encouraging to do more. Yeah, you know, uh, with... 50 years under my belt with this work and still boggles my mind that 2,000 years ago this man Yeshua knew exactly how to collapse false perception, collapse carbon-based memory with all its stories and give us an opportunity to enter into the world that with perception we have voided and get back to that world where which is where we're designed to live. It's just like it's mind boggling. Well, Peter reiterated that too. And if I'm not wrong, didn't Peter for years his career was bringing um wisdom teachers to Sweden to yeah. conduct classes and so forth. And he said again this morning, he said, this is the most powerful tool I have ever run across. Yeah, there's nothing uh, that I know of in the world that compares with it. And the, the biggest challenge in using it that I see is that People think they know something that carbon-based memory is telling them. It's a total fantasy and have no idea that they're 
knowledge is fantasy. Right. And then it can be collapsed, and, and and when we collapse it, it will be replaced with something so much bigger each time. And as far as I can tell, it just keeps expanding. There's There doesn't seem to be an end to it. Yeah. Well, Pretty, congratulations um, on that new insight. Right. Well, um, my mind has been <laughs> surfacing painting pictures of me that, for me, that um, uh, uh, regarding my younger son, that all of a sudden one day, one of my other siblings says, well, you and David are so much alike, which caused me to, you know, ponder that. And I realized that, that, um, question in the worksheet about giving up being right. Oh my God, that is such a powerful realization <laughs> that I'm stuck in wanting to be right. It's, and the other part of that question is I give up the right to be right and to make up another story with those um, <laughs> right. Now it's, yeah, uh, it's just so insidious. Yeah, the mind can make up a thousand variations on the theme, and it's all just the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you happen to be on the show back. Oh, it's probably getting close to a year ago now, but Aria, she was about four at the time, and uh, she wanted to watch a an anatomy video, kids' anatomy video. So I put it on, and it had this um, cartoon character that's going to teach about the body. And uh, you see the organs all, it's kind of like an outline caricature, and all the organs in the body, and uh, the organs of the body fall out on the screen, fall out onto the floor, and then in turn, each part sings, and, you know, explains to the ch child what that part of the body's about. And when the eyes came up, the eyes sing a little song that go, I am your eyes, I am your eyes, I see the world around you. Arya looks at me and she says, Papa, they don't understand, do they? We see with our brain, not with our eyes. <laughs> and that was oh, not something I had ever said to that girl. <laughs> we see with our brain. <laughs> Right. And that's just so true. Yeah. So, so. Can you still keep her d during the week? Oh, yes. Yes, we've got her. We'll have her tomorrow. Again, we have her usually at least two days a week. And we're getting uh, more right. overnight or, an over, or the weekend type uh, type opportunities with her. So that's pretty sweet. She's five now. Yeah. And just such a delight. Such fun. The last, uh, let me share two things that she has done. I said, I, I really want us to help her stay in the intuitive knowing that she's in. But the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, she told me about a dream that she had about unicorns. And I said, well, that was a sweet dream. She said, oh, I control my dreams. She said, I tell my mind when I go to sleep what I'm going to dream about. And I do. And so they're wow. always sweet dreams. Yeah, she said, so they're always sweet dreams. Well, then the other day she was talking about another child in her classroom that she really wants to be friends with her, but this other girl is a little bossy and angry and all this. So I had a conversation with her that, you know, when other children are angry, there's usually something else going on. They're either afraid or they're, you know, something, and they're covering it up with their anger. I said, you know, you don't have to take her anger. I said, but be the space for her, and, you know, if, uh, you know, she still is angry or whatever, you know, you can tell her, say, you know, I'm here for you when you decide you want to, you know, be nice or or be friends or whatever, but, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and take your anger. I said, you can do that. And she goes, oh, well, I can read minds, Nene. She said, and I know what she's thinking, and so I can usually fix it. And wow. yes, 
I said, I, I don't want her to th- think that she can fix everybody's problems, but it's awesome right. that she can hold the space for them. She can tell what's really going on for them. And uh, I said, you are really a healer. And she goes, you know, it seems like every time somebody gets hurt or feels bad, I'm always there to take care of them. Wow. Yeah. She's yeah. amazing. There's no way she really know. is. What? She picked out from being there when you're doing the radio program. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, but less being steeped in it by just being with you. Yeah. Well, you remember, For and sure. you were you were on the show way back in the early days, or some of the earlier days, you know, the first year and a half, showtime was her nap time, and she always went to sleep on my shoulder listening to the radio show. For for the first wow. year and a half, at least two three days a week, so she yeah. she's been building brain cells from the beginning, and uh, and more and more it's showing. It's just uh, it's really right. pretty sweet, pretty awesome. Yeah, she wanted me to help. She wanted me to help one of her dolls to uh, like cancel goals and and get rid of her sadness. <laughs> so. Wow! <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It's just the tip of the iceberg of what a human being can be if we aren't conditioned as much by the world. Exactly, exactly. So what else is exciting in your world? Um, Energy work and breathing work with my older sister. She has some. a rash from the top of her head down to her feet. It's not on her hands or feet, and it's miserable. And her doctors, really, they had, did several tests and finally said it's hives. And um, they don't know, you know, what's causing the hives. And I said, well, stress. And she said, yeah, they said that, but I don't feel, you know, any particular stress. And I said, you've uh, created stress in your life since you had children because she and her husband both worked two jobs, had two children. I mean, you know, it's just control, so to speak. It never created crises, but it was there. And um, anyway, she said, yeah, especially the um, recent, you know, recently. And I said, well, I'm going to, you know, pay attention to what I see on the Internet. And if I see anything that seems worth sharing, I will. And I said, but I do know that if you don't get the toxins out of your body, through the normal means, it, it can come out through your skin. And she said, yeah. So anyway, I, I'm looking forward to doing some breathing work and in body energy work with her. Um, awesome. Yeah. You have the, uh, really the worksheets for the energy field, the directions for the energy field work? Yes, I do. Yeah. Good. Cool. Well, we'll hold the space for openings and healings. One of the other things you might suggest to her uh, is, you know, just go to the health food store or jump on Amazon and get a simple colon cleanse because a lot of times when uh, the colon gets blocked up, it reflexes to the skin. The skin's like the default uh, takeover organ. And so some of that pressure can be alleviated just through a a simple uh, colon detox as well. Okay. All right. I will definitely do that. Well, it's so good to hear both of you. Um, I think well, it's about nice to hear your voice. It's been a while. At, yeah. I think about my time at Heartland with such joy. It was just a phenomenal experience. Awesome. Well, delighted that you've been there to play with us, and it looks like we're probably going to uh, to do a season next summer, 
And, uh, of course, we'll keep everybody posted if that comes together or as it comes together. Great. Wonderful. It's been, you know, 2019 since our last season when COVID struck and just haven't done it since. Right. Well, you didn't quit, though, and that served a lot of people. Yeah, we uh, we just yeah. about did a season this past summer, and uh, it just got to be where it was more work than I was ready to do. You know, getting yeah. the buildings <laughs> open and doing all that goes with that. Right. We'll have to get Peter to come back. He was the one that was willing and able to get on the roof. Yeah, it was sweet to have him there after so many years. Cool. Well, anything else on your mind for today? No, just glad to you. Thank you, and thank you so much. All right. Appreciation. Extending love in your direction. Take care. Well, Miss Jeannie, do we have anybody else in the phone queue or anything happening in the chat room? No, Tippy is with us all the way from Thailand, so welcome in. Oh, lady. good. Yeah, she had texted me and said she was likely going to be there today. Extending love in the direction of your brother, Tippia, and uh, holding the space for his healing. It sounds like maybe some things are opening up, moving in the right direction. Had a hand go up. I believe it is Mr. Terry, 336, you're on the air. Good afternoon, folks. Well, hey there, Dr. Bowling, how are you? Marvelous, marvelous. It's just a gorgeous day. Your last conversation um, prompted a couple of questions. One, okay. I... I still I know I have the um, direction for the energy field work in one of my booklets, but do you actually post that on your website too? No. 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 Okay. It's something that, that so. you know. It's like the still point breathing process. It's something that takes personal instruction. Then I wouldn't put it up for somebody to just pick up and and think they can do it without some instruction. Great. So that's the, probably one of those items that, that uh, well, for one, you know, I, I found that to be very beneficial in the fact that for a couple of different reasons. <laughs> one is that it was another demonstration that we can help each other you know, we don't have to have years and years of training and schooling and paying lots of, you know, expensive tuitions and stuff. That That's right. Through a little a, a process, you took us through that process a few times. You were there and available. Should there be any questions? But it was really um, a relatively easy process to, to learn and pick up. And I still remember some of the moves and uh, have the uh, muscle memory of that. So I'm going to dig through my my binders. I've got, about, I've got three big YN binders and uh, everything's in right. there somewhere. <laughs> it's just a matter of organizing. Actually, I have four YN binders. And uh, uh, I'll see if I can't uh, come across those. It's always a, a, a pretty um, amazing and, and enjoy, a joyful trip down memory lane, too, because there's a worksheets and there's notes I would make during the classes and little things right, about right. the kids where they were there. You know, there's all kinds of good stuff in there. So I'll see if I can't pull that back out. And then um, 
have you have you um, updated them any? You think because that, that copy I had is probably ten, twelve years old. Are they pretty much yeah, still the no, same? Yeah, no. Yeah, that uh, the last edit of those was probably about fifteen years ago. And yeah, you know okay. what what's in that those those different steps to go through the whole structure that that is a. Uh, when I when I first discovered still point, you know, I mean, I'm practicing medicine and I'm working with people, but when I first discovered the still point and realized what it was, my pursuit then became, what do I know of? What have I experienced over the years that helps people to move into still point? And that's what that whole energy field uh, thing is. I mean, there's probably oh. There's 20 years of study, probably 50 different classes to assemble that, that I did, that I took. You know, like in some cases, you know, I think like some of the steps right. are from, let's say, polarity therapy. I and mean, I spent two years studying polarity therapy. And so here are the steps that I've observed put people into still point. And each piece of the energy field work is something that through experience uh, and, you know, whether it was when I was studying chiropractic or whatever it was, was uh, what what helps people get into that space where they go into that high-speed processing place. And so that synthesis is a good 20 years of work. Probably, I don't know, maybe eight or $10,000 worth of classes to put those specific yeah. pieces together from all the different stuff that I'd done over the years. So yes, and along you those hands lines, on people. Yeah. Yep, yep. And then um, I put a little note out to some of the some of the folks that are in these different little agreement threads that I I uh, maintain and we share and support each other. And so this morning uh, I was I I've been working with this concept that's in uh, the twelve step programs and it's just and it's really um uh, brought forth uh, consistently and in a in a pretty strong way as far as hey this is very important and it's uh it's a real simple little statement that the therapeutic value of one addict helping another is without parallel. There's no equal that's been found in that little vernacular, the 12 step world, and just one helping, them, you know, working with another. Right. So I've taken that, I took that and expanded it a little bit and said the therapeutic value of one human holding a loving space with another is without parallel. Monumental. I, I further said that uh, that is the only remedy I have found to be truly effective in regards to all pain, whether it be physical, mental, or emotional. When we support each other, the pain lessens. Uh, and I did t- put a little piece that said, Dr. Rice, Dr. Jimlin, 12 Steps. These are my methods of dealing with life. And they have at the core one person sitting with helping another. And they know that you're not alone. You're never alone. There's always someone that's willing to, if you look, there's someone that's willing to help you because it's a reciprocal experience. And uh, with the holding of the space in still point, phenomenal. Probably the first time in some people's lives that, they will actually have someone just sit and listen to them for, you know, the whole hour, listen to them breathe, just be in that space with them. It's just it's, it's beautiful. And then with uh, Dr. Jenlin's work, same thing. Two people, their whole, one's holding space while the other does a little focusing, which is very similar. They're similar uh, dynamics, and they're, they're, right. they're an active, uh, uh, you know, active listening kind of action. So um, I wanted to put that out there to you, how, how beautiful that is. And then the, the uh, steel point 
piece to it, the, the little exercises, I got to dust that back off and uh, look at that. Because now we're doing the breathing on the weekends here on, on the, the the monthly um, groups. So that encourages me to get a partner that will participate so that we can actually do a little bit of this uh, work, you know, that involves the, the um, methods that you taught, you know, that you've taught me. That's uh, uh, that's that's something that's been forming with me here for a while. I want, and that was very connected to that dialogue with the previous lady. And then one other thing I want to put out there before I turn it back over to you and get some feedback is that now, you know, I've done the uh, master cleanse several times. Uh, I find that it takes a real effort for me to get my mind in, in the right space to persevere, but that, you know, to get just to get psychologically ready for it, it takes some effort. Right. And uh, then I've done, done the um, the one that was, uh, I think it was um, created by some some fellow uh, over in France, and they use a clay that uh, I picked right. up. Right, Benson, help Benson well, clay. Years ago. Yeah, it was something like that. I had, it's been a long time since I thought about that. So I wanted to ask you, is there another method, or if there, would you just talk about any of those methods. I feel like I could really benefit from doing, uh, you know, a colon cleanse, and I wanted to get your right. input, input and thoughts about what, sure. what you think might be the most uh, beneficial and effective for me right now. Yeah. Well, I suggest that you jump on Amazon and search for a book called Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management. Tissue I've Cleansing got Through that Bowel one Management. From the last yeah, okay. yeah, you referred okay. that to me before, tissue cleansing That's through bowel best. management. Yeah. Now, right. in that book, Jensen, the author, lays out five, six, seven different types of cleanses from a very simple one right up to a thing called oh. a Palima process. So, you know, you can start with something simple or go midway or, you know, the, the Kalima process is like it's just about a, a week full time where you're paying attention to your detox and your cleanse. And actually it was, uh-huh. it was created by a gentleman named V. E. Irons. And the last time I was on a platform with V. E. Irons, we were presenting at a conference together. Uh, and that's probably mm, 25 years ago now. He got up on the stage, he was introduced and then he had his wife bring over his brand new baby. He was 82 and held up and introduced his new baby <laughs> to the audience. Oh my and he's the one who created the Kalima process. And, uh, Wait a minute. You know, How old was his wife? I don't know. I never really met her. She was there, but I didn't mean she was. Okay. She wasn't 82. <laughs> Let's say that. Yeah. Okay. This was to make sure. Yeah. She was right. a, a young woman. I I, I don't know exactly yeah, what, but probably, you know, maybe mid to late 30s. But uh, obviously, at 82, yeah. he was rocking it. <laughs> it was so, rocking. It. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he was vital. Yeah, he was. Yep. And uh and actually the man who you know introduced me to that, Bernard Jensen, we had actually done a conference uh oh geez, thirty years ago in Delray Beach, Florida, or pardon me, in Deerfield Beach, Florida. We spoke at a center that was run by a psychologist and we were both part of the same conference and he was in his eighties. Uh, and he was out there promoting his book and just you know, he was on the road and just as vital and spry, as clear in mind as as you can imagine. So, you know detoxing works. It's uh it's an important step in the process. So that would be where I'd go. I'd start by, you know, go back and review that uh tissue cleansing book and there's a lot of just 
superior information in that book. Really powerful stuff. And, uh, you know, start, uh, start, you know, water in the morning. Stay away from the food for a while. And one of the things that, uh, that Jensen used to say is, you have to earn your breakfast. You don't get up uh-huh. and stuff your face with food. You earn your breakfast. You don't you don't yeah. eat breakfast until you've worked. And uh, that was one of the things that he used to push. And I know I we actually found a a, a good solid strong glass bottle that they sell a a, a, a product that's a intestinal flora drink. And it's 50 ounces, and that's my start of the day. I don't touch food until I've drank at least one of those. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I kind of remember that. It's uh, uh, that flora. There's one that uh, Michelle used to get, and you had to buy it. It was refrigerated because it was a live, live thing, obviously, right. with the flora and all in it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So go for it. We'll hold the space. How are worksheets going? I will. The worksheets are going good. Consistent. You know. Daily, I, don't, I don't know if you were on the show or, the num- or the if you've heard from Dan Reed. Say that again. I don't know whether you were on the show when I talked to you. the numbers to- were... <laughs> I'm sorry, we've got a delay here, I guess. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to let you go. Uh, I was going to say, the worksheet process is consistent, but the number fluctuates <laughs> up and down. And I didn't get on the show. I didn't hear the show with Dan on it uh, in that regard. So, uh, But I do talk to him, you know, two or three times a day. And he's going, he just did 30 this morning, I think he said. <laughs> and he's got or something it was 30 this morning or 30 last night and 10 this morning so go ahead and share with me what you were going to share now oh last week he just shared with the group on the show that uh, he he had just passed the 1500 mark since he started doing worksheets again which is pretty powerful I mean, he's just moving through stuff like just it's amazing it's awesome it is, and the, and the the dialogues we've had in relation to what comes up in the mind when you're when you take on a project like that uh, it has been really fun. We've had some really good conversations back and forth uh, in relation to that process. It always amazes me when people cancel their goal what the mind just spontaneously and instantly goes to what they're what we can touch into it just it always amazes me if we're really paying attention what the subtle energies are that start to move when a goal is canceled and perception collapses it's just monumental and our our little I'm interaction a moment ago <laughs> with our delay <laughs> go ahead uh, I, I was just going to say, I'm glad to hear that we're re-engaging um, the goal to uh, have a, have some activity at Heartland next summer. Working in that direction. Could need a little help from my friends, but we're working on it. Yes. So, so our our little interaction back and forth there a moment ago reminded me of a story about the uh, woman who uh, who goes to the doctor and the doctor tells her that she's pregnant, and uh, he says, "Now, if you want your baby to be very polite, just rub your stomach three times a day, and that will help the baby to be very polite." And she's like, "Okay," and so three times a day she rubs her stomach, and and. Uh, Along about three months, she goes in for a checkup, and, and the doctor detects two heartbeats. He says, now remember, you know, if you want those babies to be polite, you just make sure you rub your stomach three times a day. So faithfully throughout the whole pregnancy, you know, seven months, eight months, nine months, ten months, eleven months, 
12 months, she's still rubbing her stomach three times a day. Two years, three years, five years, 10 years, she's still rubbing her stomach three times a day. 20, 40, 50, 70 years later, and finally the doctor says it's time for a cesarean. And does a cesarean, and when he does a cesarean, here are these two little old men, one saying, oh, no, after you. Oh, no, after you. <laughs> I was so polite. They've been arguing for 50 years, 50 years. Yeah. Very polite. <laughs> that's a joke that's always tickled my funny bone. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny one. Well, delighted that you're out there doing the work and passing it on and uh, making it available. That's what it takes to uh, to get this to every mind, heart, and being on the planet. And we're definitely moving in that direction. So anything Pop else on your mind for today, sir? Honored. Not right at the moment. Mm-hmm. All right. Appreciate you. Lots of love and blessings. Take care. Bye-bye. Howdy, bye-bye. All right, so we're down to about uh, 12 or 13 minutes. If you're out there in this or land, our call-in number, 563-999-3581. If you call that number, you'll be listening to the show. And then if you uh, have a question, you push one, and we'll be... Engaged in a conversation. So how can we support you? So, Ms. Jeannie, do we have anything happening in the chat room or anything? Harry has not called in yet. Um, Hippia says no, I just saw she, just sent, she sent me a text saying that she had talked to Dr. Tim earlier, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, Hippia says uh, her brother isn't talking but that he smiles at her when she gives him food. Uh, he Physically, he's much better than he was two weeks ago. And she said she read the blog about the health crisis, and she understands it. But um, And she thinks he's in the process of changing inside, but because he's not talking, um, she can't lead him to do a worksheet or talk about goals or anything like that. So like right. everybody was just talking the last few conversations, just being with him and holding the space for him when you're in his presence. And even when you're not, um, that has healing power in itself. For sure. And tip you something else you can do. You know, you can get one of the simple worksheets, the simpler ones, and walk through you doing the worksheet yourself as opposed to trying to get him to communicate, just explain to him what you're doing. Take the simple form worksheet, you know, I've got this going on and I have this emotion and these are my thoughts and this is my goal and I'm going to cancel my goal. And, you know, that might help him to build the brain cells just by you modeling what it is to do the forgiveness process. And that may help to uh, pull him out of his shell. And, you know, there may be some worksheets for you to do on goals that you have for him. And as you are able to cancel those goals you have for him, you might see energetically a shift happen in him because of the space that you're able to hold. So there are a couple of ideas of of things that you might do to move forward. So if you're out there in this or land, we've got about 10 minutes left. Push one. What's on your mind? How can we support you? Check my other email, and there are no questions from the app. So, Okay. Come on, somebody cool. press one. Direct us. How can we help? Well, let's go back to this idea of, you know, the whole focal point on living 
without perception. Again, that's one of the sections in our uh, ever-expanding mind shifter list, one of the newer sections, is the ability to put away perception. And, and corollary with that is putting away memory. Of course, we live in a culture where memory is king, and yet when you realize, of course, memory, if I'm remembering something, it's something from the past, and few people realize that they actually have to build new proteins. So, you know, we think, oh, I'm remembering that direct event. Well, actually, your brain has to build a new set of proteins to represent that event, and it's not the same event at all. It's it's a memory-like, but oftentimes when we think we're remembering something directly, we're really there are other energetic patterns that are interfering. And, of course, again, everything to do with memory is from the past, and perception, by definition, is from the past. And there is recognizing, and some people are like, well, how could you possibly live without that? Well, here's how you could live. There's a greater mind, a much greater mind, than that mind. You know, if you look in the ancient teachings, they talked about the mind of man, but then there's the mind of love, the mind of the creator, and that's a mind that you can count on far more than you can your own memory bank, far more than you can believing the constructs of your mind are accurately representing actuality. And as uh, Joanna said, you know, the mind is making its best guess. If you want to learn more about that, if that one leaves you with a question and you're like, well, wait a minute, I'm not so sure about that, jump on YouTube and put a search term in, Anil, A-N-I-L, Seth, S-E-T-H, TED Talk. Here's a guy who's a neuroscientist, explains the whole thing. Perception is simply the mind constructing its best guess based on, one, the circumstances that you're in, and two, the content resonated by those circumstances. And 100% of the time, there's always something you can trust far more than that. And that is by honoring the mind, the live mind of love in you and trusting it to guide you. In the ancient teachings, they called that the mind of Christ. I remember Paul saying, and again, you know, people tend to interpret words like Christ religiously. I'm not suggesting anything religious here. I'm saying that there is a mind in you that is different from your carbon-based memory. It is the live mind of love in you, and it's your birthright to live out of it. And it will always take you in the right direction where perception it just it's a mind that simply replicates the past over and over and that's where the power the healing power of forgiveness comes is that when you understand that your perceptual constructs are driven by goals and you cancel those goals remember the word forgive in aramaic is shabag or shabak it's been translated as forgive but it actually means to cancel and when I cancel the driver, the goal that I hold that's causing my mind to use this data from the past to build the world that I think I see out there, but is really painted on the inside of my eyeballs, then that world collapses. And if we're willing to trust it, there is another mind in us that will take over. And it is not the mind of man. So that's the invitation to consider, through forgiveness, collapsing the world of perception. And what, what tends to happen is the instant after you forgive and perception collapses, there is a, a space where one gets to taste directly the presence of love. Now, the mind at first might just take a fraction of a second for its resonance to kick in and 
want to take over, like literally a fraction of a second. But as you enter that practice on deeper and deeper and deeper levels, you become less and less reliant on the past and perception. And you recognize that, I mean, literally, the mind behind the whole universe is right there and available to you, and it's your birthright to use it, and you can trust it. It it speaks differently. You know, there's a an interesting passage, and in actually in a new book that I've been working on, we have the... Yeshua having a conversation with a character in the book, much like the uh, Why Is This Happening to Me Again book where there's a character having a conversation with me, only in this case it's a character having a conversation with Yeshua. And the passage in the scriptures that comes up is where it says that the creator, it says with, in, in regard to the creator, it says with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to you. And the character is kind of confused about that. It's like, says the usher, it's like, well, well, why would the creator, Gus, why would the creator speak with stammering lips in another tongue? And Yeshua offers a correction. It's like, no, 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 that's not it. That's man's projection. Because we've gone to a far and distant foreign land and taken on a foreign language, and the language we've taken on is a language of hostility and fear and the past. We're listening with stammering ears and a f- totally foreign set of brain cells compared to living in and as the world of love. So it isn't that the creator, I mean, that's how it's presented. Of course, it's men writing that. That's how it's presented. See, the creator is doing this, stammering licks and not tongue. But we're listening. We're trying to listen to love through brain cells based in the past of hostility and fear. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of years of those experiences in each one of our bloodlines. So we're the ones who are listening with crooked ears. And the power of doing your work is as you clean out the hostility and fear-based content, actuality no longer needs to filter through that. Actuality will no longer be filtered by that. We'll get a direct taste. A time when we come into direct relationship with the actual presence of love that resides inside of us now you know greek mythology has pretended to be yeshua's teaching and you know greek mythology's put that power somewhere way out in space but yeshua reminds us and this even comes through in the greek although it's mostly ignored do you not know that you are a temple of the creator? If somebody tells you that the kingdom is over there or over there or over there, believe them not, for it is here, it is now, it is within you. Now, there are a lot of people talking about, yeah, well, I know when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. Why are you going to wait? You're supposed to be there now. And this isn't a mythical, you know, religious journey. It's it, it's what you apply where you live to free yourself of perceptions from the past, to free yourself of carbon-based memory or what was called the mind of man and literally live in the mind of love that is already in you because we've been brainwashed with so much hostility and fear, it seems that world is no longer available to us. But it is, and it's our birthright to live there. So joining you in doing that, holding the space for it, in the meantime, got the best year yet of your eternal life. It's an awesome gift to give the world, and blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with Dr. Michael Rice and myself, Jeannie Rice, 
and Dr. Tim Hayes and Michelle Pache as we present the First Century Aramaic Internal Process of Forgiveness. We are here for two hours every Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 2 o'clock Eastern Time on MindShifters Radio. For more information on Aramaic Forgiveness, please visit www.whyagain.org. That's www.whyagain.org. 